What you might think of as weakness, your ideal individual may see as strength. Learn right now how a vulnerable origin story can bond people to your brand. How to tell your brand story to increase sales. Hey everyone, this is Cannon Wing with Inspiration to Millions. One thing that will always set you apart from every other brand is your brand's origin story. Regardless of the competition, no one else will ever have the exact same story that puts your brand in a league of its own. In today's digital market where people have virtually endless options, a brand's origin story can be the deciding factor. Today, we are going to take a closer look at how to inspire brand loyalty in your ideal individuals using your brand's unique origin story. From a very young age, we are conditioned to be receptive and attentive when being told a story. As children, we learn about the bigger world through the stories of those who came before us. And even now as adults, when someone says, let me tell you a story, our instinct is to sit still, lean in, and listen close. When deciding what companies to give our hard-earned money to, today's consumers are paying more attention to the finer details than ever before. The brands we do business with say more about us as individuals now that we have the ability to learn so much about what a brand stands for and what a brand will never stand for. Today's consumers choose brands whose story aligns with their own, whose values reflect our values, and whose contributions to humanity make us feel good about ourselves by association, make us feel good about purchasing your product. When we make a purchase from a brand, we are joining a vision, a shared vision for a greater future. We want to know what promises the founders sought to resolve and, and the solutions they sought to give. We want to know how they dealt with the challenges they encountered along their way and, and the path of creating this brand. We don't trust the perfect image anymore. In fact, we don't like the way the perfect image makes us feel, frankly. The I'm above you so you should listen to me attitude of the perfect image is suspicious and we can't relate or feel akin to a brand that has itself stationed above us. No one's perfect. And a brand that presents itself as perfect will reach nobody. It may momentarily appeal to an unsettling desire to appear perfect to others, but that's a purely superficial and unsustainable start to any relationship. Remember, brand loyalty is your business plan. To make a healthy, long-lasting connection, your origin story must go deeper and touch their hearts. Your origin story is your brand's opportunity to not only introduce yourself, but to set the course for your ideal individuals to begin imagining themselves as part of your brand's community, as stars in your brand's community. Your origin story is your brand's opportunity to map out almost identically the exact reason why someone would want to buy from you. That's how you do it right. Because the decision to buy is emotional and with sheer magnitude of options facing us today as consumers, we have become very discerning about how we want to purchase and how we want our purchases to make us feel. Who are the people we feel most connected to in life? The people who know us best, right? The people who we can be ourselves around, the people we can trust because they've opened up to us and helped us grow and encouraged us to open up to them. When a loved one is vulnerable, it makes us care. It makes it okay for us to be wonderfully imperfect humans because that's who we are. In a seller's market where the decision to buy is always emotional, vulnerability isn't a weakness at all. Vulnerability is the beginning of a beautiful relationship. Vulnerability in the world of business has long been stigmatized as showing weakness, and those days are over. The businesses still navigating towards that stigma are sinking ships. Quite apart from a Appearing flawless, your brand's origin story should be an exercise in vulnerability and putting yourself in the mindset of your ideal individuals. Remember, your ideal individuals are at the beginning of their own hero's journey. And if your origin story isn't vulnerable, you may not be able to imagine that greater future with your brand, that it could also be possibly for us. We don't trust perfection. We trust authenticity. And authenticity has many facets, and that includes vulnerability. Be humble, sincere, and authentic. A great origin story alone may not be enough to win brand loyalty every time, but if you don't put it out into the world at all, you will definitely miss out on making potential lifelong connections. Every story ever told can be mapped out with the structure known as the hero's journey. 
This was titled by Joseph Campbell, and there's actually 12 stages to the hero's journey, and I highly recommend that you Google it and, and go into it, and I go into it in a lot of other videos, but with the time we have today, I'm going to provide you only with what you need right now. For the purposes of today's episode, I've broken down the hero's journey into three stages, and they are stage one, the beginning, the usual world, stage two, the battle. And stage three, the return with the elixir, the return with the bounty, the return with the fortune. You can probably see that structure in a lot of movies or in the movie that you last saw. We're going to use one of today's most effective brand origin stories, Patagonia, as an example of how a story arc not only maps out the hero's journey, but also maps out the buyer's experience and the reason why people would want to buy from your brand. Keep in mind that when we look into a brand's origin story, we want to feel an emotional connection. Movies are stories. When we go see a romantic comedy, it's because we want to experience the thralls of love. When we go see a revenge movie, we want to experience the sweet release of getting eaten. When we go to an action thriller, we want to experience the rush, the adrenaline. You know, we want to get there. We want to get in the action. When your ideal individual reads your origin story, it's because they want to experience whatever emotion that will inspire them to join your brand. Let's get started. I'm going to tell you a story. Stage one, the beginning. Founder of Patagonia, Yvonne Chouinard, is 14 years old when he starts climbing mountains. The year is 1953, already a nature lover. This young man is a member of the Southern California Falconry Club. After one outing where he was taught to rappel down cliffs to observe the falcons below, Yvonne is so taken by the experience that he and his friends begin hopping freight trains to nearby Stony Point where they can learn more about climbing and rappelling. Chenard started hanging out at Stony Point every weekend. Stony Point is a relatively small climbing spot and it's good for practice for beginners, but for someone with Chenard's raw passion for climbing, it began to feel a bit monotonous. He wants to climb higher and for longer, but at that time, climbers are anchoring themselves to rocks using pitons made with soft iron that had to be left behind permanently lodged into the mountainside. To climb a mountain such as Yosemite, it would take hundreds of heavy, expensive pitons just to get to the top. Even if it was possible to pack that many pitons on a climb, Chouinard simply couldn't afford it. His solution came in 1957 when he decided he would just learn how to make his own reusable hardware. He goes to a junkyard. He buys a used coal-fired forge, a 138-pound anvil, and he starts teaching himself how to blacksmith. So cool. It wasn't long before word spread that someone had finally invented hard iron reusable pitons, and before he knew it, he was in business. He hauled his anvil and tools around in his car and he sold his pitons at a buck fifty a piece while traveling to different climbing sites. For the next few years, he spends all of his time chasing good weather across the country while forging and selling his pitons along the way. He lives on 50 cents a day and a diet of oatmeal, potatoes, and the occasional poached ground squirrel or porcupine. <laughs> Dedication for you, right? By 1965, the demand for Chouinard's gear was so high he couldn't keep making it by hand, so he went into business with his climbing buddy, Tom Frost. Over the next nine years, in partnership together, they redesigned and improved almost every existing climbing tool to be lighter, to be stronger, to be more functional. Every time they took a trip to the mountains, they would come back with yet another idea on how to improve the sport of climbing. Okay, so this is the beginning of the Patagonia origin story about a young man passionate about nature who fell in love with the sport of climbing. From humble beginnings, he encountered a problem that prevented him from pursuing his passion to the degree that he wanted to pursue it. Remember, he wanted to climb higher and longer. So he went to great lengths to solve this problem and keep on climbing. He didn't set out to change the pursuit of mountain climbing for everyone. He just wanted to support his passion. So he ate squirrel and he packed an anvil around with him all over the country. What a remarkable young man and a true nature enthusiast. Who else are remarkably passionate nature enthusiasts? Who else wants to learn to climb even higher? Patagonia's ideal individuals, that's who. Now let's dive into stage two, the battle. By 1970, Chouinard's equipment is the largest supplier of climbing equipment in the US. But this surge of climbing enthusiasts reveal a new problem or a new solution, however you want to look at it, right? The hammering and the removing of the pitons are causing terrible disfiguring and damaging the mountains Chouinard loves so much. After an ascent along the badly degraded El Capitan, which has been pristine just two years earlier, Chouinard and Frost decide to stop manufacturing 
pitons. It's a huge business risk. But they both feel like it has to be done. Their equipment is destroying the faces of mountainsides. No one was complaining, and bu the business was booming, but Frost and Chouinard refused to continue participating in causing any further damage to the environment. As a result, people started to get their pitons from competitors. So here's where we have the founders of Patagonia, passionate outdoorsmen who pursued rock climbing with such fervor and innovation that they wound up doing irreversible damage to the very thing they love the most. This, the vulnerable part of the story, this is where we see them as men, as human beings who make mistakes. We all make mistakes. And being willing to admit it and learn from them, make that hard choice of stopping and pivoting, this is an admirable quality because this is what every human must do along their way, along their way to success. Do you know who else is admirable? Fallible human beings who love nature and worry about the impact their presence may be having on the environment. Do you know who else loves that? Patagonia's ideal individuals. Let's see how our heroes get out of this pickle in stage three, the return. Determined to phase out pitons entirely, Frost and Chouinard go back to the drawing board and emerge with an alternate aluminum chocks that could be wedged in and out of cracks by hand instead of hammering deep into the mountainside. It took two years to perfect and a lots of revenue, but in 1972, they released a catalog opening with the editorial to raise awareness about the environmental damage being caused by pitons and an introduction to the new and improved aluminum chocks. The 14-page editorial opened like this. There is a word for it, and the word is clean. Clean is climbing the rock without changing it. A step closer to organic climbing for the natural man. Within a few months of the catalog's release, the piton business tanked and chalk sold faster than they could be made. And so it was with our, our heroes emerged from adversity with the holy grail, the key to helping their ideal individuals stay true to their love of nature and their passion for enjoying it through climbing. So let's recap. The hero's journey is mapped out in three stages. The beginning, that origin, that some humble beginnings, that usual world, that battle, our big challenge that we have to face, make a hard decision, and the return with the treasure, the lesson learned, the elixir, right? Your ideal individual's journey to becoming a part of your brand community is also mapped out in these three stages. The beginning, the battle, and the return. It's the exact same journey. In the beginning, be honest, don't act like you had it all figured out because in the beginning of your ideal individual's journey to choosing your brand, they haven't have it all figured out yet, whether or not your brand is right for them yet. Relate to what it's like to be a beginner. Richard Branson named his company Virgin because he admittedly stated, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> Present yourself as a human being with relatable interests who saw an opportunity to solve a problem because that is exactly who your ideal individuals are when first considering your brand. In stage two, the battle, this is where you are vulnerable and honest about the failures you encounter through those tests and trials and, and challenges and how you chose to deal with them shows your character, bonds you with your ideal individual if you're making the same choices that they want to make in their life. This is where you have the opportunity to really connect, be honest and humble about your failures because these failures are exactly what your brand promises to help your ideal individuals avoid, overcome, get through. When people are considering new brands, they're always encountering obstacles to buy, such as spending the money, not knowing if they have the time to use the products, not being confident they'll be able to use the products. When your origin story values every vulnerability by exposing your own, people find the courage to push past these obstacles to buy. In stage three of your origin story, The Return, you emerge triumphant, having overcome the obstacles, and now you hold the key to helping your ideal individuals reach a greater future faster and easier, now that you've blazed the trail. The Return shows your ideal individuals that the journey can be made, the solution is possible, and it's possible for a person starting out just like they were to live into that greater future offered by your brand. And when your ideal individuals are aligned with this story, they tell it to their friends and family who tell it to their friends and family. And now who's selling your brand? Your customers. And statistically, there's no better salesperson because we are all 50 times more likely to buy from the recommendation of a friend. Now it's time for you to diagram your origin story using the hero's journey. Map out your brand story using the three stages and then tailor the story to map almost identically with the reasons why your ideal individuals should buy from you. The hero's journey is ongoing for everyone and it always follows the same formula. Make your origin story a map that leads your ideal individuals straight to your brand. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. Your brand began with a passion for something you love and desire to do better. No matter where you are in your hero's journey of building your brand, always remember to love what you do and love how you do it. Thanks for watching. Don't miss out on a single thing. Subscribe below. And here's something else I think you'll love.